Okay. A young visitor gets an introduction to Morse code, the system of dots and dashes once used for wireless communication. Amateur radio operators, called hams, still use it today. They are aboard the Queen Mary, the pride of the Cunard Line, after its 1936 launch and now a popular tourist attraction. The wireless room preserves the ocean liner's communications hub. Queen Mary Commodore Everett Hoard says it was a lifeline in emergencies, providing two-way messages shipped to shore. And not only did they carry several transmitters for transmitting the ship's business, they also, even in 1936, had radio telephone service. Today, volunteers from the local amateur radio club show off old equipment and operate new gear as they talk to hams around the world, says wireless room manager David Akins. Just chit-chat back and forth, some of them for hours at a time. Uh, many on voice, some of them even on Morse code. Volunteer Kurt Freitag says the wireless station is popular with visitors and hams overseas. And when we get out there and say, this is W6RO, our call letters, we get a pile up. People go, that's the Queen Mary, and they all jump, talk to me. Talk to me, don't talk to me! Ham operators help with communications in disasters, from earthquakes and hurricanes to winter ski accidents. The man who helped create the ship's ham radio operation, Nate Brightman, says helping in emergencies is an important part of the hobby. And that's the big reason that the government is so nice to ham to radio operators and give us all these frequencies to use because we serve the public. It's a hobby and it's a lot of fun but it's also very valuable to the country. And these volunteer radio operators are continuing the heritage of seaborne communication on board the Queen Mary, reaching out to visitors to the ship and radio enthusiasts worldwide. Mike O'Sullivan, VOA News, Long Beach, California.